Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about Ansible architecture. At first, let's take a look at three major components of a typical project. Playbook, configuration file and inventory file. Playbook ret uh, retrieves basic configuration from configuration file and retrieves hosts, which it will be managing from inventory file. But Playbook isn't configured with inventory file explicitly, so it retrieves info about this file from configuration file as well. So it's something like this. To get uh, an inventory file, we first need to ask configuration file. Now we will start more detailed exploration with the configuration file. It is called ansible.cog and uh, it is used by playbooks during execution. Pretty self-explanatory, but this file includes various configuration parameters, such as username, which Ansible will use for SSH, SSH key checking policy, transport, which Ansible will use for SSH, inventory file name, and many, many more. Some of them we will discuss in the following videos. In many cases, it is very useful to change some default value to a specific one in order to do it in just a single place instead of potentially multiple places in playbooks and inventory. Ansible looks for this file in different locations with a particular precedence, which I encourage you to learn from Ansible documentation. I personally always have ansible.cfg file in the same directory with my playbooks. Here you can see a basic example of such file. Next we have inventory file. It is used by playbooks to define hosts and run tasks against them. It contains and groups hosts which you want to manage and it also could contain variables for individual hosts and for group of hosts as well. There are some useful features which you can use to group groups, number hosts, dynamically create hosts and many more. Some of these features we also will explore in the following videos. And here, again, you can see a basic example of an inventory file. And finally, we have Playbooks. Playbook is responsible for all automation logic. If you need to automate any task, you have to convert logic of your manual steps into Ansible-specific syntax and put it inside a Playbook, which will be finally executed. Here is a diagram which, re which represents a playbook and its uh, inside structure. Playbook can contain one or more play. Here we can see two plays, play one and play two. Plays are run against one or more host. Plays can contain one or more task. Here we can see four tasks inside play one and four tasks inside play two. Task invokes only a single module, and module is the final element which controls what action will happen. Here we can see that task 1 is tied to module X, task 2 is tied to module Y, task 3 is tied to module Z or Z, and task 4 is tied to module X. We can see that uh, different tasks uh, could be tied to the same module. Here task 4 and task 1 are tied to module X. And here we can see that play 2 can have different tasks which are in turn are tied to different modules Y, A, B and Z or Z. These bullets I've already mentioned, so let's move forward. I believe that the simplest way to understand all that structure is to look at an example. We will explore again WordPress application which consists uh, of three tiers. We have a load balancer, 
web server and our backend database. Imagine that we want to deploy such application from scratch. So we currently have nothing. And at the end of the day, we want running WordPress application. What should we do? Obviously, we need to develop a playbook. And uh, our playbook uh, consists of three plays. Play1 is responsible for configuring database and it consists of two tasks, installing MySQL and configuring SQL schema. Similarly, we have two more plays which are responsible for configuring web server and load balancer accordingly. So we have play2 which configures web server and play3 which configures load balancer, Nginx in our case. From that, we can conclude that Playbook defines our complete goal, deploy an application. In our case, deploy WordPress. Play defines actions more detailed. Uh, Play defines more detailed actions, but still pretty broad. Configure database. Configure web. Configure load balancer. Task defines final and the most detailed instructions. For example, install MySQL, configure SQL schema. Remember that Ansible tries to use declarative model. In our case, it means that we do not, uh, that we do not have to specify installation method, yum or apt-get, for example. Since Ansible will figure out appropriate method automatically. Now let's consider example which relates to networking. So let's imagine that we want to configure DMVPN. DMVPN with two hubs, several spokes, and two clouds. Typical DMVPN setup. What steps do we need to do to accomplish that? I believe that we need to configure routing, crypto configuration for IPsec and tunnel interfaces. We are not going to dive into DMVPN uh, specific configuration and uh, other, other stuff. We just need to highlight some basic, some key steps to configure DMVPN. Let's try to convert the steps into Ansible format. Please pay attention that, play, uh, that playbook which I've shown before, this one, and the playbook which I will show uh, you now are not actual playbooks. It is just a pseudo code with Ansible-like structure. We will develop real playbooks in the following videos. But anyway, let's explore our current pseudo code. It looks like this. We have playbook called configuring DMVPN. And again, it's our broadest statement. It tells us uh, what we need to accomplish at the end. At the end, we want DMVPN configured. Next, we have two plays. Play1 configure hubs and play2 configure spokes. They are more detailed statements and pay attention that play1 runs against hub routers and play2 runs against spoke routers. And finally, we have tasks. Task1 configure routing, task2 configure crypto, task3 configure tunnels. And we have the same tasks inside play2, but names are the same, but meaning is not. Since payload, which we will uh, 
which we will give to hubs are very different from payload which we will give to spokes if you are familiar with dmvpn you know that conf that configuration uh, of hub is different from configuration of spoke router so finally let's uh, go step by step one more time playbook uh, talks about our main goal configure the mvpn play is a little bit is a little bit more specific it tells configure hubs and configure spokes and tasks are the most specific element it tells ansible what actually it should configure configure routing configure crypto configuration configure tunnels And one more note, uh, actually, uh, in case of iOS, in case of uh, Cisco, we can simplify this playbook uh, even more. But right now, we are exploring Ansible logic, so we have uh, this playbook, which, al which allows us to see different plays, different tasks, and so on. Uh, in further videos, uh, I think I, I will show you a little bit more simpler setup, but to really understand the logic behind Ansible, I believe uh, this, this example is uh, much more better. So, with all this information, I think we are finally ready for some hands-on experience. So please prepare your lab environment and I will see you in the next video.